Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be trying on one of the new foundations from Sisley. I also picked up two of the Clay de Peau single eyeshadows and I also picked up two of the Rare Beauty. They are those new luminous blushes. One arrived broken unfortunately but I still may be able to pop it on just to show you the shade. So all my skincare is done and about 15 minutes ago I reapplied some more sunscreen. Now because the foundation that I'm using today, the new Sisley one, it's the Fito Tint Perfection Luminous Matte ultra long-lasting skincare foundation. Now, I've worn this about three or four times, and I really like this foundation, and I think that it suits my oily skin really well. Now, I've tried this applying it with a brush and also a sponge, and I've spoken about this before in other videos. Usually, either a brush or a sponge, either is fine, but with this foundation, I do prefer it using a beauty blender, so that's what I'm going to be using today. Now, this foundation has 30 mils of product. It is made in France, and it has a shelf life, let me have a look, a shelf life of 12 months from date of opening. Now I picked this up in the shade 2N1 and that is the shade Sand and I think that is a really good match for me. Now with the primer, even though I have really oily skin, with this foundation it is more of a matte one. So I've tried it with about four different primers that I have and I do prefer it with more of a radiant primer. So today I'm going to be using the new Tom Ford radiant primer and I used that in a video, I think it was last week when I had two new base products. So I do prefer it with that. Now if you don't have the new Tom Ford primer, I'm gonna put that on in a minute. I also have the Victoria Beckham one and that gives, uh, it's a radiant glow as well. And I also have the Laura Geller one. This was gifted to me last year, and this is the Spackle Skin Perfecting Primer. And this has more of a luminous finish as well. So either of those three that I have, or if you have more of a luminous primer, that's the one that I would definitely use with this foundation. So I'm just gonna take one pump of the new Tom Ford Primer has that little pink tinge to it. You can't really see that once it's on the skin. This is a beautiful primer and it does give a really lovely, it's not greasy or anything like that, but it does give a really beautiful luminous base. So I'm just gonna let that primer sit for two or three minutes. Now on the Sisley website, it says the foundation gives a naturally radiant matte finish. It's ultra long lasting and I would agree with that. They say it's also transfer proof and I would agree with that as well. It has an undetectable texture for flawless skin and day long comfort. Now this is a medium to buildable coverage and with a sponge you do get a little bit more of a sheer coverage but you can still definitely build it up to full coverage if you want but I prefer it just as medium coverage and then it also goes on to say it does offer medium to high buildable coverage with no cakey effect. Fito Tint Perfection blurs imperfections and minimizes pores. The complexion appears enhanced and more even and in a word, it says perfect. It really is a lovely foundation. How it would go with dry skin, I'm not too sure. I think this is more suited for those with combination to oily skin, but if you had normal to sort of more of the dry skin and you're still interested in this, then I, this is something where I would definitely pick up a sample before you invested in this foundation. And they say that there are three ways to apply this foundation. For a quick and easy medium coverage, it says to use a kabuki brush and to buff the foundation into the skin. Or you can use the fluid foundation brush for precise application and high coverage. And I would agree with that because I have used, it's not a Sisley brush, but I have used a brush and it does give that more of that high coverage. Or it says you can use your fingers for targeted application and a natural effect. And that's probably why I prefer the Beauty Blender because for me, a Beauty Blender is similar to putting on a foundation with your fingers and it does tend to give a more natural type of finish. 
So here is the bottle, it is glass, it has a pull-off lid and it is a pump dispenser. Now when you pump this out, it doesn't pump out a lot of product, but probably enough to do my face. I think I'll start with one pump. I'm trying to remember whether I put on one or two pumps the other few times that I've used it. Now it doesn't appear thick. As I hold my hand up, it is starting to run down a little bit. And the way that I've been putting this on is just dot it on one side of my face first and then use my dampened beauty blender. And I also use another sponge as well. I use one of the Rafa ones. And I dampened this down just a little while ago and squeezed out the just the excess water with a hand towel. But I definitely prefer putting on this foundation with a sponge. And this way I think it does give a really beautiful, more natural finish. So just applying those few dots on my face, you can see that the coverage, it definitely is a medium and it covers up my, my redness quite well. Now you can build this up and I will build it up a little bit just to show you. But first of all, I'm just going to do just the other side of my face first. And then once I've done that, then I will build it up a little bit. And just with the little bit that's left on my sponge, I'm just going to just take this under my eyes as well. Then I'm not going to do another full pump. I'm just going to build up through here and here just so you can see it built up. I have actually a couple of breakouts here. And I think I wore this foundation, it might have been yesterday or the day before, and it covered that as well. So this pump is controllable. Sometimes with makeup products, you get a pump and you can't just pump out a little bit. It has to be the full pump or nothing, but with this, it is quite controllable. So I'm just gonna put an extra dot through here and then you can just see it being built up. And I'm also just gonna put it just, just through here, just to cover those little imperfections there and just blend that in. So you can see now that it has built up and you can no longer see any redness whatsoever. So I just did that really just to show you how it builds up. For me, for my everyday makeup, I really just prefer it how I first applied it, just with the one pump and taking it towards that full coverage. For me, I think that's more preferable. But for those of you that have just a couple of areas where you may want just that little bit more coverage, then this does a really beautiful job of covering that up. So I'm just gonna put on some of the Sicily concealer as well. I have this in shade two. And this is the concealer. It has the cool metal tip to apply it. But usually I just pop a little bit out on my finger because you don't need much of this at all. And just pop this on. This has a peachy tinge as well. So it conceals and it corrects. It really is. It's a lovely, lovely concealer and really flattering for under mature eyes. And that's because it has the skincare ingredients in it as well. So I've just done my eyebrows, put some eyeshadow primer on, and I put a little bit of powder under my eyes. And for the rest of my face, I am going to powder over top of this foundation. Now, this is a foundation, if I didn't have time to put any powder on and I was in a rush, when I feel it now, I really wouldn't need to powder it. I'm going to use the Sisley one and just do a really light dusting. I have worn it with powder the other days. It doesn't make it any more matte or anything like that. It just gives it just, just that little bit more of a seamless look as powder does. So this is the BK Beauty Brush. This is number 102 and this is just super soft. So it's just putting on a very, very fine layer of powder. 
So once you've got all the foundation on, it doesn't feel like a flat drying mat on. It definitely works better, as I was saying at the beginning of the video, with a more luminous type of primer. But it doesn't feel like a drying mat at all. I would, I'm trying to compare it to, I don't really have, I have soft matte foundations, but nothing that is sort of more mattifying than that. I'm trying to think, I don't have a bottle of it anymore because they expired, but the original Estee Lauder Double Wear would feel more matte than this foundation. Now, I did see a video a little while ago saying they didn't like this foundation. They had dry skin and they said, I don't even think it would suit. It would show texture even if you had oily skin. Well, I disagree with that. I think probably this is suited, as I was saying, for more combination to oily skin, but on my oily skin, it doesn't settle into the lines and it doesn't emphasize my pores and I think it gives a really beautiful finish. So I think it matters what primer you use and also the type of skin that you have as well. But for me, I think it is a beautiful foundation and it's definitely one that I would reach for in the more warmer weather. It would be in those few foundations that I've got that I reach when the weather is hotter, my skin is more oilier, definitely one of those foundations. I think it gives a really lovely finish. And for bronzer today, I'm going to use the new, the limited edition. This is the Dior bronzer. I think these are beautiful. And I did a video on this a little while ago. And I've been wearing this quite a lot. I think they are really beautiful. And these also have a little bit of luminosity to them as well. So now let's take a look at the new, these are the Clay de Peau, the single eyeshadows. I picked up two shades. There are six shades in total. And when you buy them, they don't come with the case. You have to buy the case separately. At this stage, I've just bought the shadows and not the case. And I picked these up at Harrods. And I picked up the shade 106 Toasty Sand. And the other shade is number 103. And that is Deep Sea Amethyst. And these are made in Japan and they have a shelf life of 24 months from date of opening. So this is how the refills come and this is the one Deep Sea Amethyst. Really beautiful lilac shade and these have a satin finish. I will hold these up a little bit closer in a minute so you can take a better look. And the other one is Toasty Sand number 106 and I really love... This is a brown eyeshadow. It has like almost a little bit of bronze in there as well. Really beautiful. So I'll just take them both out of the packet and hold them closer so you can take a better look. So this one here is number 106, Toasty Sand, and the other one, 103, Deep Sea Amethyst. And swatched. 106, Toasty Sand, and 103, Deep Amethyst. And I'll just go over that one again. So these came out in the six shades and they have that beautiful deep blue color as well. And I got these from Harrods and when I picked up the two, they didn't have the blue one available. It had either sold out or they haven't got it yet. So they say the highlights of these eyeshadows, they've got a satin finish, pressed powder, made in Japan. They apply evenly and blend smoothly. They give a radiant finish without fading, dulling or creasing. Delivers moisture to the eyelids for comfortable wear and formulated with a fragrance of natural rose oil. Now this fragrance is very slight. I can hardly smell it at all if at all really when I'm applying it and certainly can't smell it once I've applied it. So the fragrance in it is very very subtle. They say add a radiant sheen to your lids with one impactful color. The eye color solo takes inspiration from beautiful objects found in the sea and each shade in the range is designed to reflect the light and leave your eyelids with a subtle sheen. Whether you use it on its own or as an eye catching topper over a cream shadow, each shade offers true to tone color 
and ensures a seamless finish. So I'm just gonna wear these on their own today, but you could also pair them, it doesn't have to be a clay de po eyeshadow, but if you picked up some of the quads last year, these can be mixed with those or any other eyeshadow quad that you have as well. I just liked the brown one in here. It has a slight little bit of bronze to it. It's really beautiful. And I really love that lilac color. I think it's a really beautiful cool shade. So I'm going to start off with Toasty Sand. I've put them back in the plastic covers just to protect them. And I'm going to take, I think, the Raffa brush, the number 14, and start off with this brown shade here. And I'm just going to do my usual look where I do just popping some in the outer corner, take it through the crease and up onto the brow bone as well. Now I have already worn these eyeshadows. I've worn them a couple of times. I think they wear really well. They give, it's typical clay de po. They are, they're not super pigmented or anything like that, but they give a really beautiful, beautiful soft look. Now in saying that they're not super pigmented, as you can see, this is buildable. So you can just sort of have like a soft wash of color or build it up as well. Now the excess that's left on this brush, I am gonna take it over the rest of the lid, but not as much color as I've got in the outer corner. And I'm also gonna pop some of this on my lower lash line as well. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more just to the outer corner and through here. These blend beautifully. They have a really gorgeous creaminess to them, really beautiful, and they just look gorgeous and blend beautifully as well. So I'm gonna take a Sonia G, one of the pencil brushes, I think this is the pencil one, and sticking with this shade, I'm just gonna put this on my lower lash line. Then I'm gonna go into the shade, the Deep Sea Amethyst, and I'm gonna take the Raffa brush, this is the 02, and just pack some of that shadow onto the brush, and I'm just going to put that just through here and towards the middle. Now this is quite a sheer shade. I think it gives a really beautiful, beautiful finish. So eyeliner and mascara is on now and here is the finished look. And I think these two shades together are super pretty very soft, very elegant. You've got a little bit of a sheen through there, but it's nothing that's in your face. It's just all very soft and pretty. They blend beautifully. As I said, they are creamy. They last really well. Really beautiful eyeshadows. So now let's take a look at these Rare Beauty blushes. I can really only show you one because one arrived broken. Now I picked up two shades. I picked up the shade Cheer, and that one is intact. And the other shade that I picked up is the one Happy. So this is really a mixture of the highlighter and the blush mixed together, and you get these soft pinch, these luminous blushes. I think they look really beautiful. And the shade that I do have in the liquid blush, that is in the shade Hope. So instead of buying it in this new luminous, the soft pinch one, the ones that I picked up, I thought I'll get two new shades. So I was really disappointed that the shade Happy that I picked up is the one that is broken, but I still will be able to swatch it for you. It's just that I can't hold it up. I tipped out a lot of the broken bits that were in there, but if I hold it up too much, I think a lot of it's just gonna fall out. So that is what's <laughs> that is what's left of Happy. So I'll still be able to pop it on my cheeks and also be able to swatch it for you. I'll have to go really carefully put that on my cheeks though, because it's already broken up. It's gonna be even more pigmented. And the other one that I picked up is the shade. That is the shade Cheer. And that is super pretty color. I'll hold it, I'll hold this one up a little bit closer so you can take a look and also just turn down the light in front of me as well. So this is the shade Cheer really beautiful and both swatched on my hand so this is cheer and this is the one happy
So these blushes have 2.8 grams of product. They have a shelf life of 12 months from days of opening and these are made in Italy. I think what I'll do first is I'm going to put on the shade chair. Now these swatch really beautifully but they are pigmented. You do have to watch them and I tried the shade yesterday I think and thought it was really beautiful. So I'm just going to go in quite easy. I'm just going to use my Chanel blush brush to apply this and I'll put this one on my left cheek I think I'll put chair on my left cheek and I'll put happy on my my other cheek and we'll see how it looks so I only picked up a tiny amount on on the brush and it does have that luminosity but I think it is really beautiful now it will show texture and people have texture so that's quite normal. What I look for in a blush though is it doesn't emphasize my texture too much and as long as it doesn't do that then I'm quite happy to wear a luminous blush and it does buff in beautifully. The more you buff it the more that it just melts into your skin just that little bit more. It is a really really lovely formula. So that was just one tap and that's the shade chair and I think it's really beautiful and the shade is described as a light warm pink really pretty so now I'm just going to wipe down my brush and we'll go into the other shade my broken one and that's the one happy this one I'm going to have to be very careful it's picking up a lot and that's only because it's broken so I'm just going to dab a little bit on the cloth in front of me as well and then pop that on. I can actually dip in again. Just top that on my cloth in front of me as well. So this is happy. And that is really beautiful as well. This is more a more cooler shade. I'm not quite sure which one which one I prefer. I'm going to get in contact with Sephora and no doubt they will replace that blush. I don't think there'll be any issues with that. I don't think I said, but I did pick these up from a Sephora in New Zealand. They launched the same day as they launched in the US. So both shades, this is the first time that I've worn the shade Happy and I think that looks really beautiful as well. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe Chia is just that little bit more subtle. If you want a little bit more punch on your cheek, then the shade Happy sort of gives just that little bit more. But I think both shades look really beautiful. And then I'm going to finish off with one of the new Chanel lipsticks. And this is in the shade, it's the lighter shade, it's 07. And then finally, instead of a perfume today, I'm going to wear the perfumed hand creams. And this is from that set, the trio set, the chance one that Chanel came out with. I think these are still available and I do reach for them quite a bit. And today I think I'll put on this one here. This is the fresh one. I really love the scent. And I have shown these before in other videos, but I'll just quickly show it to you again so this is the hand cream and it's just very light and just absorbs into the skin really easily and it just leaves my skin feeling super soft and leaves this gorgeous scent not too overpowering you just get a hint of it throughout the day so not only do I put some on my hands a little bit on my arms as well I'll just put some on my other hand but also I just put a little bit just on the side of my neck as well and just helps to just bring that scent out in a very subtle way throughout the day but I love them I think they are a beautiful formula and they are beautifully scented as well for yourself or I think that these make a gorgeous gift as well so here is the finished look and I think all together it looks really beautiful. I wasn't too sure about putting the Rare Beauty blushes, the new ones with the clay de peau, because I did want to keep the look 
very soft and I thought these might be just those Rare Beauty ones are just that little bit too much but I actually think they look really beautiful and I'm pleased that I did pair it with those Clay de Po eyeshadows. So we'll start off first with the foundation, the new Sisley foundation. I really like this. I think it is perfect with my oily skin. I also think that it looks really beautiful on my mature skin as well. It doesn't settle into my lines. It doesn't emphasize pores. I think it is gorgeous. I love the coverage that it gives. For me, as I was saying at the beginning of the video, I do prefer applying this with some sort of a beauty sponge instead of a brush. That's because you get that medium, more natural finish. And now that I've had a look at the website and they give those three different ways of applying this foundation, the most natural finish is using your fingers. That makes sense why I prefer the beauty sponge, beauty blender over a brush. But I think it is a gorgeous foundation. I think it's more suited to combination to oily skin. This is a foundation where you pop it on and you don't have to fuss with it throughout the day. Perfect for summer. I'll be able to wear this all year round. It does pair better with those more luminous primers, I think, than the other primers that I have that are more geared towards the soft matte. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, if you have normal to dry skin, this is definitely a foundation where I think you should get a sample and try it out. I'm not saying that it won't suit your skin if it's normal to dry. It's definitely one where you'd have to have really well moisturized skin and a good moisturizing primer. And I think it could look really beautiful as well, but definitely one that I would get a sample for just before you decide to dive in and buy a full bottle of it because Sisley's always on the more pricey side. The Clay de Poe eyeshadows are beautiful. I love the two shades that I picked up, the brown with a little bit of bronze in it and that cool lilac. I think it gives a beautiful eye look and I'll also be able to pair those two shades using with the other Clay de Poe quads that I got last year as well. And I think with that lilac shade, you could put it over quite a few different eyeshadows that you have and just to give a topper. And I think that would look really beautiful. They are creamy, they blend beautifully, and they also last beautifully throughout the day as well. The biggest surprise for me out of them all is really those rare beauty blushes and not the surprise of it arriving broken. That is disappointing, but how beautiful they look. I really thought they would be ones that emphasize texture as I said those blushes that have that luminosity to them that hybrid of blush slash highlighter they do show texture but everyone has texture so that's not really a big deal what I don't want them to do is emphasize my texture and make my skin look worse than it is or that I have more pores than I actually have and there are products that will do that especially if they're more drying or if they're quite thick whereas this you can put it on in quite a sheer way it buffs beautifully and I think they look absolutely gorgeous on the cheek so I am going to get hold of Sephora I'm going to they probably won't get me to return the shade they'll probably just send me out a new one because I really like that shade happy but I do love this one as well so that's cheer and happy and out of the two I'm not sure which is a favorite. I think both look really beautiful, but definitely still going to just get a replacement for that shade Happy because not only, I knew as soon as I'd opened the box because it had, you can see here, there's bits of the blush. I thought straight away this is broken. And I think I watched a couple of other videos where they've arrived broken too. So hopefully if you order these, they arrive intact. And if they do, you're going to be thrilled with them. I think they are really beautiful blushes. So that's it for today's video. I would love it if you gave it a like and subscribed and I will see you next time. Bye.